When you think of the Thanksgiving holiday, a lot of people, I'm sure you do, think of eating turkey meat, but more and more people are actually choosing meatless options. They're going the plant-based versions every year. We want to send it over to our reporter, Ali Canal, who's joined by a very special guest on this. Ali? That's right, Shauna. I mean, some people out there actually have meatless options uh, on Turkey Day, some meatless turkey. It's a phenomenon that's happening. And joining me now to discuss is Adam Grogan. He's the COO of Greenleaf Foods, which is a plant-based division of Canadian consumer food company Maple Leaf Foods. Adam, thank you so much for joining us. I mean, the U.S. Department of Agriculture noted a decrease in frozen turkey inventories this year, down uh, about 25% below the three-year average average volumes. What have you guys been seeing in terms of consumer trends? Is this a sign that more Americans will be going meatless this year for the holiday? Well, Ellie, firstly, thank you for having me. Really uh, fortunate here to represent Greenleaf Foods. Uh, we, uh, we are seeing, you know, turkey consumption over the last number of years uh, down across the board. Uh, it's down about 20% uh, over the last number of years, last 25 years. And, uh, you know, turkey costs are up quite significantly, up about 25%. And right on top of that, we have a uh, huge uh, interest and desire by consumers to have more plant-based options. 93% uh, of all new consumers that are coming into our space are actually meat eaters. So uh, we call them, uh, lovingly call them flexitarians. So uh, right now we're seeing an explosion of uh, plant-based uh, roasts that are made for the holidays, uh, both for Thanksgiving and the Christmas timeframe. Actually, uh, in the last year, it's up about 48%. So when you compare that with some of the turkey sales and the cost on turkey, uh, it's a really uh, amazing category and it's one that we are really fortunate to be participating in. You mentioned prices, and I want to dive a little deeper on that. As you said, turkey prices are over 20% higher this year, but how has the alternative meat category fared amid these various price increases, especially when we compare that to some of the more traditional players and traditional meat? Yeah, well, meat costs across the board are up uh, quite substantially, around uh, 12%. For us in plant-based, obviously, we've, we're have we also facing a number of cost increases, uh, com you know, combination of labor and input costs. Um, so, but we fared a little bit better relative to the animal-based protein. So, um, although we're facing a significant headwind in cost and, and, and cost increases, I think the large, uh, you know, driver of consumption for plant-based products right now is really a lot more to do with health and wellness, uh, more specifically around concerns about the environment. And then there's always those uh, individuals in your household, vegans or vegetarians or plant curious individuals who uh, join the table. And we always say they have the veto vote because it's probably the number one thing that's on Americans' minds is what do you serve the vegan or vegetarian around the table? And it can't just be mashed potatoes and pasta. So uh, we're seeing a big uptick in plant-based uh, roasts and a number of things. And I guess the uh, plant curious of the animal eater, plant-based eaters um, are also trying it as well. And we've got a, um, you know, we try not to necessarily mimic, you know, turkey, animal-based turkey. We were in uh, more of the roast category. So we tend to make uh, products that are, uh, you know, with hazelnuts and cranberries and all those wonderful flavors that you would, uh, that you would come to expect from Thanksgiving. And it's, uh, it's just a wonderful uh, product line that I think both, uh, both meat eaters and plant eaters alike uh, love to enjoy at this time of year. Yeah, there, there's certainly been a significant interest in plant-based options, even anecdotally within my own circle, I've seen it. But I do want to talk about this because the Greenleaf Foods Division had 6.6% fewer sales in the most recent quarter compared to last year. And then in the previous quarter from that, you guys reported a drop in sales of 20.6% versus 2020. And it's not just Greenleaf that's facing these headwinds. We've seen Beyond Meat cut their Q3 guidance. So why the slowdown, you think, in the plant-based sector overall? Well, we're, we're, we're really evaluating that right now. I think it's important, though, for some context. Um, you know, over the last couple of years, the category has reached a high of a year-over-year -year sales growth of 100, you know, some points is hitting 100% growth uh, since 2019. And while many other categories have had what I, what I deem to be a COVID bump, where it's kind of gone up and come back down, uh, the plant-based category has rel stayed relatively stable at an elevated level. So uh, there's been a slight decrease in uh, the category consumption in the last over the last year. I think that little bit of that is to be expected. Um, we're evaluating that right now and making sure that we do the, the, the work that's required to really understand what are those issues uh, that the category is facing. But a lot of it comes down to some basic 
uh, concerns. I mean, obviously, uh, the category is being impacted by, you know, labor issues, both at retailers and in food service, um, has really stymied some of the innovation and growth that we were seeing prior to the pandemic. Um, but there's one thing that's certain, and that is that the world needs more plants. You know, by 2050, there's going to be 9 billion people on this planet. Um, we have a whole new generation of consumers that are interested in uh, mixing their plates with both animal-based proteins as well as plant-based proteins. And so um, I think there's, a, there's, a, there's an incredible tailwind here. Uh, we'll see how that progresses over the next couple of years. We're just kind of working through that work ourselves. Uh, but we're, we're really excited about the future of plant-based proteins. And I think you're, you and your own family experience is probably also a great indicator that this is something that's uh, here for many, many years to come. Right. And finally, Adam, just real quickly to follow up on some of the challenges you guys have seen with the labor shortage, supply chain issues. How have you handled those things that have come up and how are your issues and challenges different from some of the traditional players? Are you being a plant based company more insulated from traditional meat companies? How are they different? Well, first and foremost, we are very fortunate. We have over 600 associates across the country. We have uh, facilities in Washington state in Massachusetts and we're building a new one in uh, in Indiana. So we have uh, employees all over uh, the United States and what's really super important for us is their, is their safety first and foremost. I think obviously the meat industry has been impacted by uh, a number of issues uh, around, uh, you know, employee safety and labor uh, and the ability to access labor. Uh, we're really fortunate in that we have a, a really strong and stable uh, supply base uh, that's not too often in plant-based proteins. Typically, you'll see a lot of companies that exist that are using co-manufacturing. We own our own supply chain. We own our own production. Um, so although we've seen uh, many of the similar uh, concerns, I think where we're insulated a little bit is that uh, we're in the assembly business and we have, uh, we've, we've obviously used, made sure that most of our employees are, are really safe. And, and that's our number one priority.